is the bridge, however, has a hard drive, a disk drive, I should say, that can support on-premise storage, but still managed through the cloud. So the bridge connects via PoE switch. The bridge does all the heavy lifting from uh, cybersecurity and talks to the cloud. The cloud makes sure the video is not corrupted and grants access to any web-enabled device. CMBRs are ideal for places where the customer needs a hybrid device. They want to store in the cloud, but they also need to keep video on site, on premise. We can work with the CMBR, which is also ideal for low bandwidth environments. So now trying not to get too technical, but how we differentiate from on premise storage or typical DVRs and BRs. Uh, you can see here uh, DVRs and MVRs are hev heavily vulnerable from an open port perspective. Uh, sometimes IT groups are not aware of the threats that can happen through video. Sometimes they're concerned more with their network computers where they feel that they can be a potential, which yes, that can be. Uh, many years ago, we all heard uh, what happened to a large reseller um, target, right? Uh, they were exposed to an, an IP hacking uh, protocol, and that happened through their HVAC system, just HVAC system, who would have thought? Again, Eagle Eye is designed to make sure everything is thought beforehand. So the bridge, as I said, we work with any cameras, would block, it's all banking level encryption. So it goes out to the cloud, comes back to the client. We have different customers across the, the, the globe, and you recognize most of this name brand companies, but what do they have in common? Uh, one thing that I like to highlight is that they have more than one location. They have more than one uh, uh, set of cameras, right? They want to have the ability to have video centralized in one, one area. One just log in without having to have different passwords, just be able to access their video as anyone would access their Netflix account. Eagle Eye Cloud Video Management System, the S doesn't stand for software. We are a browser-based solution. How does this help you? Well, number one is designed to reduce operational cost. So the days of having to upgrade your system, having to replace the hardware, having to buy heavy software to keep it up to date, you don't need to. Eagle Eye is all cloud feature rich. So today's technology, it's great, but when you get to 2030s technology, well, the Eagle Eye VMS would be up to date with you. So what you're investing today on a cloud solution would be there for you without having to have a very heavy capital expense uh, investment. We continue to highlight the support with different cameras. Oh, I jumped something very important. So again, by using a cloud solution, what's in it for you what's your return on investment so here it is your your roi um, you're minimizing all those ongoing costs of constantly you know installation labor servers replacements it management support etc so this is 100 percent operational expense where you're looking on the long period of how you can have a system that is there for you Eagle Eye is designed to really be an scalable solution. You can scale your platform. Maybe you have 10 cameras, maybe you have two cameras. Whatever the case may be, if security is a strong concern, well, IPS will be there to support you. If you like to integrate a access control and alarm system, advanced analytics, everything is doable within Eagle Eye because we work through an API ecosystem that allows a, a simple integration. You, I'm sorry, I must have hit something here. My apologies. Oop, let me see if I can go back and control this. Okay, so this is where, where I was trying to focus, which is our RESTful application programming interface that doesn't occur in the camera, doesn't occur in type of software. Everything is open through Eagle Eye. So you let us know how you want to grow your solution. 
we can definitely apply any feature rich uh, solution to your third party technology meaning. So we can work with access control, alarm monitoring, enterprise analytics, point of sale. We can customize technically anything that you required. Um, in today's climate of COVID, um, I have questions where say, Irving, do you guys work with cameras that support analytics? Yes, but remember, um, our goal here is not having to sell you expensive cameras, you know, IPS to grow your budget. The solution here is in the cloud. We have our bridge that allows a, an analytic to be integrated. So if you have maybe some IP cameras already in place and you feel you would like to add an analytic such as a object counting, intrusion, like line crossing or loitering, those analytics can be added to technically any camera. So keep in mind, this is a very pay as you go model. You pay for what you need to. You may have uh, needs that you may not require in a different location. I have a customer that opened a restaurant and now he needs to make sure that he has an occupancy control of how many people are coming in and out. And we will see this in the live uh, demo how these analytics play out. But I want to clarify that the analytics here occur in our bridge and in our cloud. There is a, a minimum fee that you can pay, which is a few dollars to add about any of this uh, analytics. We can also work with advanced analytics as a facial recognition. If you want to display video and like a wall screen or something in high resolution, we do work with display stations through IO notes. These are available as well. The mobile app, the same demo that I would offer you here would work with, um, with the same mobile application. It's called Eagle Eye Viewer. Um, that is the name. We will put it in the chat. Feel free to download it right now as we speak. It's called Eagle Eye Viewer. You don't need to log in with a password. Just shake your phone and you would have access to the same demo that I will be providing you here. Again, Eagle Eye works with over 1800 cameras uh, across the board. Uh, I've been in the security industry for many years and I've never been of the idea of selling proprietary systems. Um, I think we need to be adaptable to the customer needs and make sure that we we offer a solution that is flexible and also that you can scale. So again, we can allow we can work with a green opportunity or an existing camera platform. Lastly, Eagle Eye was named as one of the fastest growing companies in the US by Deloitte uh, recognition. We also the leaders in cloud surveillance. Again, we are not renting third party cloud services. Everything is done in house, which one of the things I'm very proud of. And this just allows to really help you scale your your needs. OK, well, this is a just a brief summary of the who Eagle Eye is, what our solution looks like, what the topology offers. I'm going to jump to the live demonstration here, but I'm checking here with my time and I know we would have questions. If you have any questions based on the presentation, feel free to start putting them on the chat and we'll make sure we gather them towards the end. So remember, the login is via browser, I'll go here to my VMS login. It's going to request just my email address, my password, just if I log into my banking account, no different. But again, I am a millennial and I use my mobile more often than anything else. So I would be looking at my cameras through my mobile more times than not. So, this is actually a live demo here in Austin, Texas, and uh, something is called the Capital Factory. It's a business incubator. As, as you know, this is an array of multiple camera uh, models. So what do I mean by that? We have some Hig Vision cameras here, some Axis, some Hum, what, uh, some analog cameras as well. So the layout itself, this is a layout of over 100 cameras. This customer is very organized. He's broken down every area by a naming convention. That way he can just go back here and look for the cameras. But right now what I'm showing you is the preview low resolution stream. I am not showing you the high resolution stream. 
And why is that? Because I want to move very quickly here. So my bandwidth utilization is not as, as heavy if I were to run this on high res. You can do that, but just keep in mind that your bandwidth would be would be very much. So this allows me to see which cameras are offline. A lot of these offices due to COVID have closed, unfortunately, so they have removed some of the, the cameras. But let's take a look at this camera and this event is called the Lobby Center. It's actually a military place, I believe. Yeah, it's Booth Allen Hamilton. Here is a camera as you can see right away. But now you can see a different resolution. You can see a completely much better resolution that I showed you previously. This is the high resolution stream H.264. The previous stream that I showed you is a low resolution JMPEG file. If I want to see what has happened, which I think I just noticed some foot traffic, I go here to the history browser. And keep in mind that the system is already doing the motion detection here. The bridge, this customer has created a analytic for how many people are coming within this perimeter. But down below here, you see gray areas and blue segments with the green analytic. Well, the gray is where no activity has occurred. However, I'm still recording in this low resolution 24-7. But when there is motion, I record on high res. So this is what you store in the cloud, the high res video, what you technically paying for. Again, looks like there was some motion activity here a few minutes ago. Maybe the, mo the uh, motion is triggered, very sensitive. Let me see if I can, the last two hours. I can go back here and see there was actually some motion. Think here, one of the things is that you can mask that light that goes on and off. It seems like the sensitivity of the camera is very high. But I want to go today is the 21st. I want to go for tomorrow. And I can quickly find here, maybe with the time, I can be more more precise to look for video. If not, I'm going to jump to a better camera that can give me. This is actually at night time. Oh, no, perfect. Here we are. So we see an individual coming by. He's wearing his mask. This is all the different incidents and motion that occurred. You you have you can do many things here. So I want to capture this video clip because a, a theft occurred, whatever the case may be. What can you do? Well, you can save this video clip locally. You can download it via an MP4. You can put whatever pertinent notes. Suspicious person. So you download this via MP4, but Eagle Eye offers every client an archive feature. So even though you are storing video for only 30 days, because that's all you want to do, there is an archive section here. Here are a few files that we archived back in May of last year for a thermal camera when we were testing COVID. So here is the example of this camera. This is a thermal camera that is right now triggering high temperature. Maybe I should have said that it's not necessarily testing COVID. That's a bad way to say. I should say is detecting a high temperature reading. That's probably more accurate and probably the, the better way to, to represent. If you need it as an emergency to share this video, well, you don't need to save it in a thumb drive. The days of saving on a thumb drive are far gone. And that's by far very bad practice to share video via thumb drive. I just don't encourage it. Here, you would be sharing this video clip maybe with the local authorities and you're sending the video clip to them. Just like if you sent a YouTube video, you're sharing a link with them. And you can put how long you want that, uh, that link to stay. It can expire tomorrow, if you will. But what I'm showing you here is how quickly you can share that video clip. 
Um, here under the archive, there is the expiration that I referred to. You can do it for tomorrow, seven days. So you can keep a video clip here in the archive indefinitely, as long as you have access to the platform, as long as you're an IPS customer, you can access this video anytime you wish, and you can share it with you know whomever. Maybe you have a disgruntled employee in six months, you let him go and he wants to come back with a frivolous lawsuit. You can have evidence here, regardless if you're only storing video in the cloud for seven days or 30 days. So let's go back to this video clip here. So now you can save this video clip and only share it with authorized users. So now we will request a password. So I'm an employee for, I work for Apple and only Apple employees can, HR can access video. So there is the live, the video clip we captured. And it's instantly, I just, I didn't have to bother the uh, security group or the IT group with one hour of scrubbing for video and they not having relevant footage. So speaking of users, this is the next point where customers ask, well, Irving, this is all a cloud platform. Um, how many users can you have? Well, there is no limitation. You can have as many users as you like. Um, you, we also integrate with Okta and Active Directory, so we can do a complete dump here for users. But as an administrator, you can have control over what each individual has access to. So for instance, we have Alexandria Mar here. Alexandria is having 24 hour access. Well, if she's a part-timer, th there is no reason why she should have 24 hours. So I will customize this to only give this employee access during Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from eight to five. What cameras can I share? Well, right now you're sharing all of your location cameras with this employee. Well, if this is only for Cincinnati office, just give access to those cameras. What layouts? The, the same concept here. Well, this person doesn't work in Miami, Florida. I only need to give access to these areas. Permissions, here's where you can become more granular, uh, meaning that do you want the empl this employee to have access to downloaded video? Maybe you only want this person to see live video. Again, you can be as granular as you want to. If you feel like there is a potential of an emergency where you may need to share your cameras with third parties, such as the local police, you can do that. So we have a first responders icon right here that you can give them access to the cameras. I had a project a year or two years ago where school districts, you know, we were there doing uh, trainings for active shooters uh, scenarios. Well, one of our sister company, Brivo, for access control integrates with the Eagle Eye ecosystem. So we already had an access control system at the school. And the school was able to share the cameras, the outdoor cameras with the police. Uh, the police would always say that if the perpetrator, if there is a person with a gun and they're hiding and you already have outdoor cameras, there is a possibility you can see where that person is. Like I said, they can download the mobile app, know which cameras they have temporary access to, and they can, they can see what is happening. Doesn't need to be a first responder. You can share with any, any person you like and take that control back again from the cameras. The layouts here, I can spend the rest of this afternoon here going camera by camera, but it's important to organize this based on how you like to see your camera. So there's, there's nothing cookie cutter here. Everything can be changed. You can add, move however you like to view your cameras. One thing that I like here is that once everything is organized, I can just type the word lobby, for instance. And I'm only seeing the cameras that are in a this designated lobby area. I have an elevator. Here is my headquarters in Austin. We have a we troubleshooting an analytic, 
But you can see no one is at the office right now. So we have zero individuals that are coming in, zero that are exiting. Actually, I take that back. We see a person coming. So that hopefully should update. So I go to my camera settings. This is where we can create the analytic. Is an actually a Hikvision camera. So again, we don't need to have an expensive camera to, to show or support analytics. So here is actually the data that I'm looking for. So here we see how the activity of people coming in and out, counting in the last 30 minutes, and it gives me a better report. Again, right now, because of COVID, I don't have as, as much traffic as I like it to be. I can go back here based if someone came, but again, I would do a disservice because I know no one was at the office yesterday. But you can pull this data, you can download this via PDF uh, SV file and share it with your department. The other item that I like to, to show you here is that our integration with Google Maps as I said, I'm here in Austin, Texas. This demo that I'm giving you, this is where the cameras are geographically. We had a few cameras offline here. They're, they're redoing a lot of wiring in this building, so that's why you're, we're showing you a few off, off cameras. But I want to only see the cameras on the 16th floor. I know there are some cameras working. I need to see this via a satellite mode. Here is a camera that is in the elevator. And I'm still here within Google Meets. This is exactly where the cameras are located, 7th Street and Brazos. I go directly to the camera. And I'm doing it through Google Maps. I don't want to scrub for video this time. I only want to go to key images. I can see it within the last two hours to give me a key image. I can select here who's been moving around until I see a real image. I think there's one right here. Perfect. So there's all these different angles of this person, right? Going in and out. I will play this one today at 11.10 Central Time. And there it is. So you have to also remember the other important thing to have a successful application is where the camera is installed, the angle of the camera. Many times I've seen customers spend a lot of money on cameras, but they don't have a good angle of view. They don't got, they didn't install them correctly. Well, um, this is not the case because we're working with one of our you know top-notch resellers, IPS. But it's important to know that you can buy. A good camera doesn't have you don't have to break the bank and what you're really putting effort is where your video is stored, how you access video, how you pull video. So again, here you can do the same method. You can grab any video clip that you want and share it or save it. Cameras, fisheye cameras is we do work with them. I bring it up because it's probably one of my favorite cameras to work with because they have a, a really good view. So this one right now, today might be my bad day to show as many cameras as I want to, but their rewiring is a de-warped fisheye camera. It, I recommend it because PTCs can be troublesome sometimes, but the fisheye, you can really work it in a different mode. Quad, single, fisheye, front door, plano. And speaking of dashboards, here it is a health monitoring of the system. So here's where you have lots of, of all of your cameras and you can see the status of what's happening here. So if we if you want to access a camera remotely just to troubleshoot it, you can do that or IPS can do it for you. Maybe one of the cameras that you bought needs a, a new firmware. Well, you can remotely through an HTTPS VPN tunnel get to the camera and upgrade the camera. So you don't have to really go on site to one of your businesses to redo this. This is one of the benefits of having a good, 
you know, the relationship we have with the resellers is that they allow us to remotely take care of these issues when we need to upgrade a camera or power cycle different cameras. Well, let me take a look at my time here. It's 2.32 your time, 1.32 my time. I want to open the lines here if there are any questions right now on this VMS. Can everyone hear me? I hope uh, I haven't gone. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. I'm checking the chat now. Nothing, nothing's been placed in the chat. So uh, customers, if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat and I'll ask it. Or if you want to hop on your mic, you're welcome to do that as well. OK, let me I'm going to open my camera so I can people can see me and go back here to the. My you can still see the VMS presentation, right? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, so like I said, there's ways to organize your, cam your, your camera setting here. This customer decided to have um, break areas, high traffic areas. So feel free to any questions on the presentation previously or just this live demo. I'd be happy to just answer any questions. I have a question on the loitering fixture uh, yes, sir. program that you're talking. Is, is that applicable for for outside of a building also? That is a great question. As a matter of fact, let let me type it right here. I tend to be very visual, so forgive me. So here is a loitering uh, uh, feature set for this particular camera. Loitering is typically done indoor. It just depends how far out. If you put it just outside a door where people may go and take a cigarette break, for instance, that might be ideal. But if your focus is to get people farther out from the gate, maybe towards, you know, 10, 15 feet away from the parking lot, may not be well, it would not be ideal because you may get a lot of, you know, false positives, which is not the real data. So loitering, I typically see it with cameras just mounted right outside the, the door to see, you know, who's coming in into the door and you can see, you know, if people are taking more than a 10, 20 cigarette break. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, like I said, I'm not saying that it's not ideal for outdoor, it's just where you're going to position the camera is most importantly. Any other questions? Irving, a common question we get is related to the amount of storage in the system. I think you so, mentioned it, but it's worthwhile. Could could you just go over that again and how that that works? Definitely. So here we have so many different cameras. So I'll I'll take a look at this particular one and storage. Again, this system Eagle Eye was designed for the customer to basically tell us what how they want to do their storage, how they want to record resolution, etc. So we can store here video as little as two days, all the way up to five years. That is per camera. Again, we want to give you the flexibility for you to build the solution based on what's important to you. Resolution here, this camera is set on two megapixels, 1080p. Um, you can increase megapixels. Right now, this camera is only configurable from one megapixel to four megapixel. Uh, we support as high as 10 megapixel resolution cameras, uh, 10 meg, is typically a 4K camera, highly resolated, typically for forensic cases. That's where I see it most. Uh, commercial buildings, residentials are anywhere between one to five megapixel. Keep in mind that uh, bandwidth for us is important. When I go here to my dashboard and won't get very technical, is that we're not requesting a lot based on how many number of cameras and resolution that would depend how much bandwidth you need. Typically for every one megapixel, I request at least one megabit per second upload speed. Just I use the one in one. Uh, technically it's half of a megabit per second, but just to make a, a, a whole number, I say one in one. One megapixel to the cloud, one megabit upload speed. I'm not so much concerned about the download speed. It's more what am I taking to the cloud? But these art bridges are intelligent because you may be operating during the day and say, well, 
I don't have enough bandwidth during the day to upload to the cloud. Well, that's perfectly fine. The the bridge can do a buffer. You know, typically we don't want abuse of that buffer. We want the bridge to talk to our cloud as, as often as possible. But you can schedule here like this customer from nine to six in the morning, he's uploading video to the cloud. So when we look at the metrics, this is where the cloud storage is start seeing here throughout the, the time. So the the light blue is where the buffer of video and how much space you have to continue. We don't want this light blue to be all the way to the top. So we can buffer during some hours and upload during the off hours where you may not be using your your internet as much. Did I clear that question? Is was that along the lines where the question came? Yes, yeah, pr appreciate you just giving a little more detail on that. Okay. My pleasure. Um, Irving, we have a question from one of our customers. Uh, can you talk again briefly about the app that you were talking about to download? Yeah. Was it called Eagle Eye Viewer? Absolutely. Um, I tend to always show it here on my phone. I wonder if I can do it. I don't have uh, Microsoft Teams here on my phone. Otherwise, I will share the screen. So it's Eagle Eye Viewer. Uh, let me go here, jump to my website so you can see what I'm doing. And there is no password, which is the same demo that I show you here in my computer. You can see it on your mobile device. So it's three separate words, Eagle Eye Viewer. It's available on uh, your Apple product or Android. So here we go on the products, BMS, mobile app. And just check your phone and it will grant you access. So go Eagle Eye Viewer. And you can see all of these features there, okay? Thank you. My pleasure. And some of you may be asking, well, Irving, how does the famous bridge looks like? So again, since I am a very visual, I need to show you. So this is a standard bridge. Again, our goal here is not to have you buy 20, 30 pieces of heavy hardware. On the contrary, is to minimize your, your hardware capacity. This is a desk mount bridge. This is what I have here at my home. And I have two, three cameras connected, two and two in the front and one in the in the back. Um, this is the local storage I was referring to for capacity. So if you are scheduling the on and off uh, upload storage, it, it can help you there. Um, we have hardware that is ruggerized for weather um, environments, such as it gets too hot, gets too cold. We have these three or five bridges. Some of them already have PoE switches built in. Then we have rack bridges that would be on your server room. Since you're if you're running all of your wiring under one room, then this probably makes more sense to you. Um, we can grow this as as large as you like it to be. Again, the goal here is not that you are limited to only work with four cameras. If you ever go as high as the hundreds of cameras, we have devices that can support that, like this CMBR. 820. This is again a bridge device, can store in the cloud or locally. Has a 55 disk drive usable rate and can support up to 150 IP cameras. So it all depends on your solution. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. But again, what you've seen here throughout the presentation is that video centralization, um, cybersecurity, able for you to access your video from anywhere. You you are with, without having to be restricted. Um, we hear a lot of buzz and noise about cloud offerings out there, but what I'm seeing is proprietary systems. I'm seeing solutions where you have to buy an equipment that can only work one way. With us, we are open to allow you to use, uh, like I said, different type of analytics. You can include your access control, your alarm system, just let us know how we can help you. Any other questions? I'm not seeing anything in the chat and I haven't gotten any more texts or emails from anyone. Mm -hmm. What? Well, let me throw up 
uh, a question out to the to the audience. What uh, what are your thoughts? What do you feel like we think in now 2021 from how you've seen video and how this can be implemented for your solution? I'd just like to get some feedback and see what what people thought. Well, I'll, I'll start it off. I mean, I think going into the cloud is the way that we all need to be moving to. The working with uh, NVRs can be expensive, and uh, putting it out in the cloud is something that's useful. The yes, question, sir. though, is you know how secure is your access from your data collection point up up to the cloud, and the cloud getting hacked? That always seems to be a concern out there. And I'm glad, uh, Steve. Correct. Correct. Thank you, Steve. That's a great question. So the bridge that I keep referring to that you've seen here multiple times, that has a number one, doesn't have any open ports that can be locally hacked. Secondly, it talks to our cloud, has banking level encryption to go to our data centers. So all of our data centers have to be in a way, you know, qualify and test it. So we rack and stack our own our own cloud and it's here in North America where we store video for our, for our clients. Um, one thing I I can definitely set more information about the in and outs of how we create our own cloud. I can talk to my engineers and give you that information. But with us, one thing that I bring up is that, you know, our CEO is Mr. Dean Draco. He's probably one of the, the few pioneers out there that created this the cybersecurity uh, spam and wall. So he puts a lot of effort into the cybersecurity aspect of it. So just the bridge and the connection to our cloud, that is is very secure. But I can give you, I have a white paper completely written on cybersecurity that I can let you have, Steve. That way it can go more in depth. Your, your data centers are all, what is it, uh, SAS 80 or something like that compliant? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I'll, I'll bring that document that can do better service and speak more intelligently on that specific focus of cloud infrastructure. And the other thing is that we are not charging, uh, we're not passing through the fees for clients to integrate their third party technologies. What do I mean? Is that if you if you have your business and through IPS, you want to integrate your existing alarm system, you can access control. Typically, there is companies will charge you to integrate because they have to pay back fees to the other cloud providers. Um, I, I come from a company where we have to do the pass through fees just because, you know, we are renting a, a service with Eagle Eye. Those pass through fees are non-existent. Everything is, you know, open and available for the client to integrate. Are there any other questions lingering out there? Last chance. If you think of something um, later on, I will send everyone a follow up email with some of the links um, and documents that we discussed. Um, so if you have a chance to digest the information and you think of something later on, you can definitely reach out to me. You can reach out to your IP up, uh, uh, IPS account rep. Um, and if we don't know the answer, we will get with Irving and get it for you. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and do our little raffle for all of our customer attendees. Uh, here are my super official drawing bucket, the names. All right, let's see who we got here. All right, Roy Harold is our winner of our Visa gift card. So Roy, I will follow up with you um, and get that out to you. And everyone else, I will um, follow up with you as well, like I said, with the um, additional information, as well as getting you your lunch gift cards. 
Are there any um, final thoughts or questions before we sign off and let everyone get on their way? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And Steve, I appreciate you coming on. I'll follow up with you um, about that project, okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Uh, in fact, I'll be talking a little bit about it uh, tonight. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Irving. My pleasure. And Paul, I'll send you the white paper about the question that Steve asked me. That way we can address it uh, directly, okay? Beautiful. Thanks. I'll follow up with you about that other project we're talking about as well. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for your time and attendance. Um, if you need anything, please let the IPS team know and, and myself. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, Irving, for your time. My pleasure. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Irving.